I feel like I'm harnessing my inner um, Sandy from Greece. I was uh, totally binge watching Desi Perkins earlier today, and so we're going a little dramatic with the face. That's okay. There are so many things to remember for your wedding day. Like so many things, and that's where a planner comes in handy. But for those of you who don't have a long-term planner to help you remember all of these items, I compiled a list, of course, because that's what I do, of 25 most commonly forgotten items on your wedding day. And these are ones that literally almost every single couple forgets at least one of these. I definitely forgot a couple of these on my wedding day. Hopefully this list will be really helpful for you to remember um, what you're not supposed to forget, which is exactly what remembering means. Very good at this. These items are in no particular order because I didn't take the time to put them in an order, but <laughs> if you are a note taker, grab a pen, grab a paper, and start jotting some of this stuff down. If you're not a note taker, like this video so you know you can remember and come back to it when it gets really close to your wedding day so you remember to not forget these items. So without further ado, 25 commonly forgotten things for your wedding day. Number one, ice. If you are putting together a DIY bar, or um, if your bartenders don't provide it for you or your venue doesn't provide it for you, you will need a ton of ice. A good rule of thumb for ice would be one pound per person. And then you may need to increase that to one and a half pounds if you're having an outdoor summer event because obviously ice melts a lot faster. Number two, a bustle video. As a planner, this is something that I try to remember to ask my clients for, but bustling takes a long time. So even if you have your maid of honor or your mom or someone else present at the last dress fitting and they learn how to do it, having a video on hand is extremely helpful in case we can't find your maid of honor or your mom or they forget how to do it. Number three, food. Feed yourself, please. As nerve wracking as your big day is going to be, you need to feed yourself. One of the last things you want to do is pass out at the altar. Like that's not a cute look for anybody lying on the floor when you're supposed to be getting hitched. And within that, make sure your bridal party has enough food too. You can assign that task to your mom, to an aunt, make sure fresh food shows up on site and make sure you actually eat it. You will be very busy throughout the day. You'll be on your feet for a majority of it and you're gonna need every single calorie. Number five, emergency kit. A lot of people are pretty good at putting this together, but you do need to sit down and come up with all the items that you need. Makeup for touch-ups, safety pins. Um, I'm not gonna even continue to list items off. I actually did a what's in my bag video recently with all the stuff in my emergency kit and recommended a few for you along the way. I'll do my best to link that in the description box below. Sometimes I forget. Uh, but if not, you can just jump on my channel and go ahead and find it. Have an emergency kit prepared for your wedding day and assign someone to be in charge of it so they know where it is at all times. Number six, an overnight bag. This may sound kind of silly, but I forgot my overnight bag. Don't do that. And make sure it gets to the hotel. Make sure it's in your getaway vehicle or already in your hotel room so you don't have to worry about grabbing that before you do your grand exit. Number seven, cash and ID cards. I recently heard a story where a couple was not allowed to go into their honeymoon suite because the groom didn't have his ID on him. So they got turned away at like two in the morning or whatever, and they couldn't go into the hotel room because he didn't have his identification on him. I can understand the hotel's perspective. They can't just let anybody into a room. Have your identification ready just in case, because you never know where the night might lead, and you never know when you need to have that on you. Number eight, tips. If you are doing tips, I highly recommend that you have them in envelopes with the name of the company on the front of the envelope and give that to a designated person to pass them out for you. Have that plan out ahead of time so you're not scrambling last minute to try to find all of the money or get all of the cash. Number nine, water. Hydrate yourself. In fact, start hydrating a few days beforehand. It'll help your skin to be clearer and more refreshed and you will be able to handle the marathon that is your wonderful wedding day. Sure, if you're wearing a big elaborate dress, it may make it a little bit harder to go to the bathroom, but you'd rather be hydrated and go to the bathroom all the time than pass out. Because again, face planting on the ground, not cute. Number 10, transportation. So many people forget transportation, and that's not just when you leave the reception in some sort of grand vehicle. That's from the getting ready location to the ceremony location, from the ceremony location to the reception, and from the reception to wherever you're leaving for the rest of the night. And it's not just you that needs to figure that out. It's your entire bridal party. Luckily we have Uber and Lyft. Those can be called on last minute just in case you do forget 
but I do recommend that you have some sort of transportation schedule or vehicle worked out in your mind. You can mob on over to the ceremony in your maid of honor's car. That's perfectly fine. Just make sure you think through those details beforehand so you're not stranded in your wedding dress. Number 11, reserved seating signs for your family at the ceremony. Luckily, we don't run into this too often where people take the first two rows, but every once in a while, there's that one random person who's clearly never been to a wedding in their entire life, and they sit in the second row or in the front row thinking that that's the spot for them and it's not so having reserve signs to make sure those aisles are clearly marked and no one sits in them is really important number 12 a photo wrangler designate one person from the bride side of the family and the groom side of family to make sure all of the photos happen without a hitch your photographer is there to capture the moment they're not necessarily there to scream at everyone to get in or out of the photo so if you select a wrangler from the bride side and the groom side that knows everyone they can tap aunt sue on the shoulder when she's getting chatty with her niece and say hey you're supposed to be in this photo they know who everyone is, whereas the photographer is just yelling names off of a list. So when you designate a photo wrangler, that family photo time goes so much more quickly, which means you get to the party sooner. Number 13, vendor overtime. It's always a good idea to have a clear event end time. However, every once in a while, it is a requirement for vendors to stay later than is on their contract. Or last minute, if you decide that you wanna tack on an extra hour of photography, make sure you know what that amount is before you do that, because you do not wanna get spanked with a $700 fee that you were not anticipating. Number 14, coming from someone who will be at your event for eight plus hours, please do not forget vendor meals. Most vendors have this within their contract if they require to be fed, but make sure your caterer knows that it's not just your guest count that needs to be fed, but the additional vendors as well. Please feed us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please feed us. Number 15, music selection. With a professional DJ, this is much less of a concern because they're pretty good about asking all the questions, but in case you're DIYing your music, or you've pushed everything to the last minute, that could be very stressful on your wedding day when someone's running up to you and being like, hey, we're about to do the bouquet toss. What song am I supposed to play? You've got plenty of time. Start making a playlist on Spotify or on Apple Music and select out all of the songs that you want played for the perfunctory moments. Father-daughter dance, mother-son dance, first dance, processional, recessional, blah, 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 blah. Having those all organized ahead of time means you're not getting bugged on your wedding day and just enjoying it. Number 16, your marriage license. You need to carve out time to sign it and you need to make sure someone is in charge of handling that. It's a legally binding document and it's very, very important. So find someone that you trust to make sure that that is in safe hands so it can be mailed out properly later. Number 17, gift wrangler and the vehicle it's going into. For the most part, wedding guests shouldn't be bringing too many gifts, but if you do get a bunch of gifts, you need a car for them to go home in. And if you're leaving in an Uber or in a hired car, then you don't necessarily want to take all the gifts with you to the hotel or to wherever you're staying, and then have to figure out what you're gonna do with them before you leave for your honeymoon. So figure out who's in charge of taking those gifts and what car they're going into and how they will get back to you afterwards. Oftentimes we recommend one of the couple's parents will put it into their vehicle and then the couple can just get it from them after the honeymoon. Number 18, cake topper, cake server, cake knife, and champagne toasting glasses. If you have any desire to have those things, make sure you have those things. <laughs> I know it sounds dumb, um, but we totally forgot a cake knife and a cake server. We had to cut our cake with a plastic butter knife. And it was not very easy, it was hilarious, and it was a great moment, but it was hard. It was just not as fancy as using the cake knife and the server. So if you want those items, make sure they are packed up and ready to go to the venue and that your coordinator or planner knows where they are so they can set them out and be ready for cake cutting time. Number 19, guest book pens. I don't know why, but guest book pens get forgotten all the time, all the time. That's why I carry spare ones in my emergency kit. If you want a special pen, if you need something that writes on a specific kind of paper or a globe or a piece of wood, you need to have pens for that and plenty of them. Number 20, a list of personal or DIY items and where they go. If you are bringing table numbers, escort cards, any sort of signage that you've created yourself or someone has created for you but you're in charge of bringing to the wedding, there needs to be a list of those items. As a planner, I will go through those items and make sure they are placed exactly where you've asked me to place them, 
And I will also use that list as our teardown sheet to make sure that we gather all of those things and likely put them in the same vehicle that the gifts are going home in. Speaking of taking items afterwards, number 21, a teardown crew. This is one of the most overlooked items for your wedding day. Read over your contracts very carefully. Make sure you have someone to bust the tables, to pick up trash, to gather all of your belongings, to take down any string lights that you've hung up, to remove florals from arbors if the venue requires it. And don't do that age old classic, well people are there, I'm sure they'll help out. Because sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. Make sure you have a teardown crew and make sure they know that they're doing it. Don't just tell your coordinator like, ah, oh, yeah, people, no, no, they'll do it, they'll do it, and not tell them that they're doing it. Number 22, eyelash glue. I personally just found this out recently, but eyelash glue is water soluble. So if you start crying and those little spider legs start popping off your eyeball, you're gonna look real wacky. You could potentially lose your lashes. And if that's an important part of your wedding look, you're gonna wanna make sure that they stay there. So have eyelash glue on you, or try to go for more of like the individual lashes, so in case you lose one or two, it doesn't affect your overall look. Number 23, invitation suite for photos. If you want your invitations to be a part of your wedding photography, you need to obviously make sure that you bring that. And that includes all the elements. An envelope with a fake name and a fake address on it done in calligraphy is beautiful. The invitation, RSVP card. Number 24, a point person. Like, this is where a coordinator comes in handy. This is where you have to, have to, have to have a coordinator. Or a point person, so no one's coming up to you and asking questions when you're in the middle of your first dance. Not that anybody would do that, but you know what I mean. Designate someone that has all of the contact information for all of your vendors, knows your day of timeline, and knows where all of your stuff is. That is your point person. They should handle all of the chaos behind the scenes so you can enjoy your wedding day. <sighs> Guys, you know how I feel about this. That's where you need a coordinator. If you can't afford one, you still need to designate someone to be in charge of those items. And number 25, pause. Breathe. Observe and repeat. This is your wedding day. This is the only day that you're gonna have like this day. So take a moment at the back of the aisle before you walk down. Look at all the guests there. During dinner, stop eating for just a second, even though it's very important that you eat, and look around at all of the wonderful, loving people that have surrounded you. Remember to take the time to remember. Wow, that got real deep towards the end there, folks. <sighs> So that's all we have for today, folks. I hope you found this list helpful. I hope it helps you to remember to not forget. And if you haven't subscribed already, scoot on down there, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell to get notifications every time I upload a video. As always, a huge shout out to my gal pals over at Wedding Chicks for hosting this video. And until next week, bye guys.